Hi, and welcome to our show highlighting the Lakeway Business District. I'm Maria Lemieux, the treasurer of the Lakeway Business District Association, and I'm joined here today with the executive board of our association. In the middle, Mary Frances Rozak, our secretary, and the co-chairs, Jay Thomas and Jack Peralt. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. We're taking this opportunity to highlight the district because all these changes are going on now. We see like a lot of construction going on and there's just been a lot of changes. And we think that this is a great time to bring you, our viewers, through the history um, and then the businesses along that area of Route 9 known as the Lakeway Business District. And to clarify, that starts from the bridge and it goes up to the um, Oak Street intersection of Route 9. Um, but I think most people think of it at ending at the Maple Ave intersection, but it does go all the way up to Oak Street. The Lakeway Business District Association was formed in 2010, and yes, we've been together for eight years now, <laughs> uh, and right after the landscape improvements were done in 2009. Our mission is to maintain all those landscape improvements, the trees, the, the, the mulch, and the, port, the stamped concrete uh, yep. walkways, and all the amenities. Meetings. All, All the amenities. amenities along the whole length of Route 9. <laughs> in this first part of the series, we're going to talk about, uh, and there's four parts to the series. The first part is going to be mostly the history. I had a great opportunity to talk to Mike Perner, our local historian, about the Route 9 starting from the 30s. Why don't you take a walk with me now with Mike along Route 9? So welcome, Mike. Thank well, you thank for you. joining me today. So starting with um, the 1930s, what was the situation like on uh, Route 9? Well, what a lot of people today don't realize is that Route 9 didn't exist prior to 1930. Um, it was the old Boston and Worcester Turnpike, but most of the uh, roadway through Shrewsbury was still a dirt road. And then in 1930, they decided to build Route 9, and that's where these uh, photos came from as they were getting ready to build Route 9. They planned on taking some property, some land, and moving some houses back. So this was their early way of dealing with what today we would probably call eminent domain. Okay. They took pictures of every house and every business along the turnpike uh, from Lake Quinn Sigmund to the North Pro Line. So to start off, I guess uh, we'll start at the, the far end of the Lakeway Business District with uh, what now is known as Fairlawn. Um, this particular photo is of Aunt Jane's home cooking, okay. which is roughly where the, I would say maybe the mobile gas station is today. Okay. Okay. Um, so where, uh, just, to, just to interrupt, sorry, so where the uh, Maple Ave intersection is, like that wasn't, that was, that must, was that far back or further? forward? It would be further west. Okay. Okay, on the same side. Um, I've actually spoken to someone who remembers going to Aunt Jane's, uh, Mr. Donahue, that lives on South Quinn Sigmund Ave, who's in his 90s now, but oh, he wow. remembers going there. Next, this is the location today of Quinn Sigmund Plaza. Uh, this was owned by the Iovino family, who later had a gas station. As Route 9 uh, was built and uh, the traffic picked up, a lot of businesses opened along there, including gas stations and a lot of uh, stores and so on that we'll deal with in a few minutes. But their house was set back roughly where the Verizon store is now, in Quinn Sigmund Plaza, okay. or Trader Joe's. Okay. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see a little wooden footbridge there, or a bridge. Yep. There is a brook that runs underneath there. So sometimes when I go in the Verizon store, I'll say to the the people working there, do you guys ever hear ducks quacking? <laughs> He'll say, how do you know that? Why do we hear ducks quacking? I said, because there's a brook that runs under your store. Really? And the ducks are going down through there. Wow. And it runs down to the lake. Um, this was one of the, the stores, uh, Dolls, owned by the Doll family. And apparently they had, like, down the, the lower level of the basement, an old-time uh, movie projector where kids could go and pay a nickel and watch some of the uh, most uh, <laughs> recent cool. cartoons and so on. 
Wow. That's at the corner of, uh, okay. well, roughly across from St. Anne's Church. Okay, I was going to say, it looks like the building where like, the, there was like a tailor there. Or no, like, this is no. where White's Clean is. White's today. Okay, all okay. right. Uh, just a little bit away from there, this was called at the time the White City Market, but later became Matero's Bakery. Uh, some of the people my age or older would remember. Um, Actually, relatives of mine. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. On my mother's All right. Side. I remember going there. And uh, you notice a little uh, balcony type thing. I've yep. talked to a, there's a, a lady uh, that comes up to the senior center who lived there growing up. Her parents lived upstairs. And it was during the Depression, and they didn't have much money or candy or anything like that. So when it snowed, she would go out and gather some fresh snow, and she'd tell her younger siblings, Okay, we're going to have ice cream. Do you want chocolate or vanilla? So if they wanted chocolate, she'd sprinkle, sprinkle some cocoa on the snow. Wow. If they wanted vanilla, she'd put some sugar. And that's the way uh, things operated there. Uh, this was uh, a very uh, well-known spot right at the corner of North Quinn Sigmund Ave and Route 9, Granger's store. Uh, Mrs. Granger, from the sounds of it, had her fingers in all kinds of things, real estate, she was a notary public, they ran the store, she was involved in uh, town politics, um, and I vaguely, I'm going to be 67, I vaguely remember going there as a very young child uh, with my parents, my father. Uh, that's right at the corner where uh, the uh, Mexican restaurant is now, North Quinsigan Route 9. Oh, Moe's? Moe's, that's okay. it, yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of us remember, uh, until just recently, Lovey's Garage, and this was the, the predecessor of that very small building. Uh, the the Gaganigo family owned a lot of different businesses in the area. Uh, Lovey's Garage, the Turnpike Auto Wrecking, uh, uh, junkyard type operation. Um, there's another... Uh, picture coming up, but they had a little store, uh, they actually lived there. And on the corner, the, the brick building right next to the Pancake House, okay. that was run by the Guy Ganigo family, and it was an antique auto museum for a few years in the 30s. Um, then they moved the, the museum out to Princeton, where it, uh, it grew to be quite large. No, it's no, it's closed. The, the collection was sold to someone from Pennsylvania. Okay. Back in the probably mid '70s, I would say somewhere along there, and of course, the Lovies was there until just recently when uh, the new uh, development came development out. is coming in. And of course, we wouldn't be able to discuss Route Nine without Spags. This was a Spags building before it was Spags. Um, his father owned it at the time. If you look closely in the windows, a sign saying, in garage for rent. So between 1930 and 1935, when Spag started up his business over in the one corner of the building, there was a trucking company in there. So shortly after this was taken, the trucking company must have come in. And then, of course, uh, Spags grew and grew and grew until... Uh, took over the space, yeah. Right, until today it's gone. This one, uh, this building was there until the development came in. Lovey's is just to the side over here, yep. and I think the name of the family was Ippolito that lived there, but there also was a family later on that lived there. Um, their last name escapes me at the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. <laughs> that's okay. But this later became home to uh, the Golden Needle okay. tailor shop. So that's, what, that's the building that I was talking about yes. before. Yep. Okay. Also, uh, oh, the, the Mignaca family. Okay. Um, some of whom were alive until recent years, lived in the house there. It also had a, for a time, and somebody, uh, some of my son's friends pointed this out to me that I hadn't mentioned it, uh, like a, a guitar store. Yep. And you could also take music lessons there. Yep. Okay, some yep. of them took guitar lessons there. And they said, why didn't you mention that? <laughs> so now I'm mentioning it. Um, Okay, the Gagnigo family, this was at the corner of Baker Ave, Spags is right here. Okay. They ran a little store, I remember that. Mrs. Gagnigo, Lovey's mother, ran that into her 90s. 
and oh, she, she would make fresh uh, spaghetti sauce every day and so on. And I never knew this, but uh, our, our friend Lovey, who just passed away in the past few months, was almost 100 years old. And he said, see that right there, that part of it? And I said, yeah. That's when Matero's Bakery got started before they moved over to oh, the wow. other building, oh. which I didn't know. We were very lucky to have him as long as we did because he, he remembered an awful lot of things about the history of the town and that area in particular. <laughs> then we get to the other end of the Lakeway Business District. This was exactly opposite from the White City Amusement Park, so about where, oh, probably Burger King yep, is now over, there. Yep. over in that area. The Dufresne family, there were, there were a very small number of families that owned a lot of property along this uh, stretch. The Dufresnes ran a laundry over there. They had a trucking company. They had a store, the Lakeshore Market, and a number of other small shops there. Um, the story goes that whoever the Dufresne uh, person that was running this was spending some time with a lady who was married. And that came out in the open, and he took off for a number of years to Canada or somewhere else, and uh, I guess eventually returned. But uh, when the store closed, um, Mr. LeBlanc, Joe LeBlanc, who most people knew as Joe White, okay. was opening his market on South Quinn Sigmund Ave. So he asked if he could use the name of Lakeshore Market, and they said, sure, we're not using it, you can have it. So the Lakeshore Market uh, existed until fairly recent years, and the building is now the Napoli Deli, of course. Yep. Uh, but that's where the uh, name Lakeshore Market came from. And we also can't forget to discuss a, a couple of other things, one being the White City Amusement Park, which was on the site of the White City Plaza. Uh, that was there from 1905 when it opened as a, what we would today would call a cutting edge uh, amusement park, kind of like uh, if you went to Disney today, until 1960 when it closed due to kind of mismanagement, knowing back taxes and so on. Um, and then within a year or two, then the shopping plaza opened, I think in 1963. Uh, somebody earlier had mentioned Howard Johnson's, the corner of uh, Harrington Ave, later became the Ground Round. That was a long time uh, business there. Certainly the uh, Thomas family and their, their business uh, right along Route 9 there have been there for years and years. And uh, that pretty much covers the area from Route 9 up to Fairlawn. Fairlawn. And that's yep. the, if I understand this correctly, the uh, bounds of the Lakeway Business District, right? It, actually, the, the, the district technically goes up to the Oak Street intersection Okay. on Route 9, but um, I think a lot of, uh, again, it does, a lot of, it, a lot of people consider it up to the Ma Maple Lab. Okay. There are a couple of other things in the late 50s, I think 1958, the uh, Fairlawn Plaza opened with, it was one of the first shopping centers in the area with King's Department Store yep. and the a and P, over to the other side where the uh, Chinese buffet is now, but there were also a number of smaller businesses in there, including uh, Donovan's Ice Cream uh, and a few other small places. Um, just in the fork of the road, back in the 20s and 30s, there was a hotel. And later there was a fire there and the family barely uh, escaped. And then the small little gas station run by the uh, Sliman family later on was there, and today that's uh, where uh, Subway is. Okay. 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 So that that that's where the that's where the hotel was. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Now, what about the Canada Drive building behind it? Well, how, when did that come into play? That opened in, I, if I remember this correctly, in the twenties, late twenties okay. maybe, and was there for many many years. Um, in fact, if you look at the building, it's it's long closed it was Spag's warehouse but the Canada Dry uh, logo is still, still up on there, part yeah. of the building. What's funny about like going through the history of all this is like it's still kind of the same kind of businesses have been along Route 9 between like the gas stations obviously were there um, 
Well, I don't think we have as many little markets, uh, but we have bigger markets right. uh, along right. Route 9. Uh, and then I I guess, so when, what about the bridge? How did that impact? Like when, when did we first start seeing the impact of the bridge on the Route 9 district? Okay, the, the bridge goes back to around 1817 when there okay. were floating bridges. Uh, then around the time of the Civil War, they built what was called the causeway. They filled in the lake with just one small opening between the Worcester shore and the island okay. where boats could go through. Uh, that was there until 1918 when they built the original uh, bridge that was just replaced. Yep. Um, so that, of course, opened up a lot of uh, traffic. The trolleys went across there okay. and so on. Um, they actually went across the causeway too. But that would bring people in from Worcester and surrounding towns. And then, of course, when, when Route 9 was built, then that really opened things up. And you mentioned the gas stations. Uh, Shrewsbury being a very small town back then, uh, and mostly uh, the town was run by people that were concentrated at the center of town for the most part. Okay. They didn't want any gas stations up in that area. They wanted them down on Route 9 in the Lake District because they... Well, this is interesting. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what happened uh, eventually uh, the, the people around the lake area got uh, a little tired of things like that happening, so they formed what was called the Lakeman's Lodge in the 30s, 1938, I think, was the original first uh, meeting. And of course, Spaggs was the original uh, president. I actually have the minutes of the first meeting they handwritten really? wow. uh, that they gave me. Uh, and that organization became a very powerful political force in town and succeeded in getting a lot of improvements for the lake area. They had uh, succeeded in getting, say, uh, some of the roads paved where before they were just dirt roads that were all muddy, uh, things like that. Uh, they elected people to offices in the town. Uh, eventually, uh, T. Frank Hickey, who was uh, Selectmen and so on ran the, the leather factory, the corner of South Street in uh, Maine, was very influential. He wanted something or other passed. So he approached the Lakeman's Lodge and said, if you vote for whatever this is, I'll get you, at that time they had some portable schoolhouses that they had used during the hurricane of 38. So he got them a portable schoolhouse to use as their clubhouse. And that house is still there at the end of my street, which is Plainfield Ave, at the corner, uh, right at the corner of Plainfield and uh, Ridgeland Road. Okay. Right, overlooking uh, Jordan Pond. All right. That's the okay. original Lakeman's Lodge uh, quarters. And they grew to be quite large. They, they moved over to what's now the Knights of Columbus okay. in South Quinsigman Ave for a number of years. Then after World War II, it kind of faded out, although they still existed up until the 80s, and I was, uh, I consider myself fortunate that I was invited to their last meeting when they closed up their affairs in the 80s, and that's uh, how I came into possession of the minutes. They gave okay. them to me, to kind of to preserve. Okay, so this, this then brings us to uh, the Boston Turnpike Association, and that kind of how they interplayed with the, the, the lodge Lakeman's Lodge. Uh, the Lakeman's Lodge. Uh, was it, I guess, was it a competing or were they kind of working together? Oh, I would say they worked together. Uh, just about everybody from that area of town belonged to Lakeman's Lodge. In okay. fact, they had specific uh, parameters as to where you could live to be able to belong. I think it went up as far as, say, Oak Street. Okay. That way, and then over to the lake, and then down to Edgemere. And, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, so they would probably have been working together, I would say, yes. Okay. All right. I, you have so much information. This was great. I learned so much from you today. And um, thank you so much for sharing all this information about the history of Route 9 in the Lakeway District. I really appreciate your time today. Okay. I, and 
we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk to Mary Frances Rozak and Jay Thomas about the, Bo the Boston Turnpike Association. That was so much fun learning uh, the history of Route 9. There were so many things, um, obviously, that I was not aware of, and I'm sure you guys all learned something, too. Uh, but what Mike did was bring us up to about the time when White City then became a retail establishment and it was no longer um, the amusement park. Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember as much as I do, but you know we're talking about retail establishments like um, Cherry and Webb, um, McTom McCann, Friendly's, yeah. Friendly's yeah. Bradley's, the right? movie theater. Bradley's. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. And the movie theater, the movie theater, the movie theater. Yeah. The movie theater. Yeah. right? And then we, you know, and then we still had Spags, and then there was Frosties, and then there was On the Ground Round, and then you know, moving towards um, Fairlawn, we had the Big D. There was still, you know, another market at the other and end. And the King's Department Store. King's That's Department right. Store. Yeah. And store CBS there. was at the other end. And there were a couple yeah, of appliance City also. stores. Yeah. There's also CVS at White City. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so. And there was a little place called Whitey's Spa, and oh, that yeah. spa is not a spa like we think of spas today. So <laughs> it's just like a little convenience store. Yeah, Remember White, that, Whitey's Fair Lawn Spa. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, okay. so there's yeah. you know, lots, of, lots of things were happening in the 50s and 60s and, and then, early well, 70s. Again, transitioning from the 70s and the 80s, uh, Mary Frances and Jay have connections to um, the Boston Turnpike Association, which was probably, I, I like to think of it as our predecessor. Uh, so Mary Frances, I love to hear your story about uh, the Boston Turnpike Association. So in 2010, when um, I found out about the Lakeway Business District Association, I attended the first meeting and was immediately roped into being the secretary, <laughs> which is a position obviously never to be relinquished, uh, yes, <laughs> as you so both works. know, as we all know. Um, and the irony was, uh, this I, when I f first came, I didn't really understand the mission, of course, at the first meeting. Um, and then we quickly established that the mission was for the beautification. But we started talking, Jay and I, and we realized that Jay's grandfather, and his name was? Walter Thomas. Walter Thomas and my father were the original um, executives in the Boston Turnpike Association. What was your father's name? Frank Rossetti. So they formed the association um, as a social group um, in the late 60s, maybe the early 70s, and they used to meet at the um, Howard Johnson restaurant. Howard Johnson mm -hmm. then turned into the Ground Round, and now that's the site of the current Walgreens. Yep. Um, so the irony is that the original officers um, were Jay's grandfather and my father. Jay's grandfather was the, um, what, what are you now? Um, <laughs> Co-chair. Co-chair. I think then they called him president. See what happens? <laughs> so, so he was the original chairperson and my father was the original secretary. Jay is the wow, original chairperson, yeah. Yeah. and you know I'm the original secretary. So I find that irony here. Yes. Um, and that organization was primarily, like I said, a social organization. They would get together, have a lot of drinks, enjoy fellowship there at uh, the uh, Howard Johnson. But they did have some active moments in the late 80s when the state wanted to put Jersey barriers along Route 9. That organization really came together as a almost a politically active group and actually stopped that process. So while they didn't have the beautification that we have, uh, the responsibility of that, they did have the responsibility of uniting a lot of the build businesses along Route 9. So it was, I, I love the irony and I love the history that we share. I don't think we would have had the beautification that we have now if the Jersey barriers were put in there because they would have left the Jersey barriers the way they were just like the way, rest of the way up Route 9. And now today we have the, the landscaping because they got mm -hmm. it so there was no Jersey barriers there. So they, right. they did a really great thing. Yes. When they, you know, and, they, and, and I'm sure that there were other things that they banded together. Uh, oh, for, yes. I'm, and, and again, that I'm That was probably, the major thing that they that was, were, the, yeah. that was the big, that was a big controversy. Correct. That well, time. that was their most, their, yeah. I think, don't you, do you agree, Jack, that I, that was their most uh, yeah, I think active? That's, that was probably as active as they got because they did not want that barrier. They thought it was going to make too much of a highway feel to it as opposed to, a, you know, kind of a commercial road like it is now. And actually, it's 
a couple of those people that we tapped into when we were doing the, uh, uh, the master plan, and we wanted to start to bring forth some ideas and start to talk to the group down here, which was you people. And you know, we talked to, I think, Tony and asked your father and asked him if he could make some calls, get some people together. We met at the ground round, did our right. original presentation of the uh, 2001 master plan. And here's the ideas for Route 9. What do you think? What will work? What won't work? So, you know, they were helpful in that sense, too. They were probably not as interested as, as getting involved in, in taking care of things. At that time, I think that group was starting to kind of wind down or almost had become inactive. Right. But then the new generation came along, and here we are. Well, Tony did pass the torch to He to did. To, 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 <laughs> thank, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Well, this was really great. Um, it was great learning about the history of Route 9 in the, dis in the district. I um, hope you'll join us for the next show where we'll take you from the 1990s through the 2009 um, renovations. Thank you. The Lakeway Business District Association, a group of dedicated property owners and businesses, invites you to join our organization. Created in 2010 with the initial mission to maintain the landscaping improvements as part of the Route 9 reconstruction, this nonprofit association has become an advocate for local businesses in the Lakeway area. As a member, you will build partnerships with other businesses and together improve your community. As a group, you will be able to participate in promotions like our walking map and the light pole banners. Make us stronger. Become a member today. TheLakeway.org.